these miles together, it'd be a shame not to keep in touch. You look me up now whenever you get to town. No, I don't believe I will. Why not? I'll buy you a beer. I don't drink, mister. Well, coffee. What about coffee? Help yourself. Me, I pick my own friends. Thanks for stopping. Go ahead and take it away. Ah, heat up! Ah! <laughs> Double or nothing. People like you take all the sport out of drinking. I was on the verge of despair. You still are. I'm not going to loan you any money, Charlie. I got something that's too big for me to handle. I was hoping against hope. What do I find the best in the bed? Not one red cent. It's big and easy. He's a greenhorn like you wouldn't believe. Hay seeds in his hair and money coming out his ears. Somebody's going to clean him like that. Unless you and me do it first. Tell me more. Hey, Paul, look who's here. Hey, Kelly. Chris Kelly, how are you? Good fine, to see you. Good fine, to see you. Sorry. When'd you get in? Just a little bit ago. Yeah? So I'm down the road about four miles walking. Well, uh, how'd you make out in the gold fields? Any luck? I found a little gold. Yeah? No, Good. I told him he could have his old job back. Oh, sure. Of course he can. Hey, what's a big gold operator like you uh, wanted to work as a cow hand for? Well, I uh, figured if a man's got a little money, he ought to be happy. It didn't work out that way. People are always hanging around me, slapping me on the back, calling me friend and pard, hmm. always trying to get my money. That's enough to gag a rattlesnake. Some people are like that. Sure will be a pleasure to get out there in the bunkhouse and get settled. Well, of course, the best way to protect yourself is to say as little as possible about your money. That's just what I got in mind. It's especially important right now, Chris. There's a bunch of confidence men in town. Sheriff doesn't know who they are, but he does know a lot of people have been swindled. Now, if it were to become known that you had struck it rich, they'd be on your back in no time. Yeah, well, how much do you make? Oh, uh, 67,000. 67,000? Hey, friend, hard. Yes, we, uh, we want to talk to you about a couple of things. <laughs> no, don't you dare talk to anybody about how much money you made. You're not carrying it around with you, are you? No, I, I bought me a letter of credit. Oh, another good idea. You take that letter of credit into the bank first thing in the morning. Oh, and uh, if anybody tries to send you to the city hall or the county jail cheap, <laughs> you tell us about it. All right. Come on, let's get settled. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Carter. Listen, did you, did you ever think about buying a bunkhouse? I got to use a bunkhouse out there. Then I got a loan. Sixty-seven thousand dollars.
Gentlemen. Charlie Pitch. The Alderman. Obi Miles. How you doing? Walking. My pleasure. What do you want to see us about, Howard? Charlie says he's lined up a sucker for us here in town. I thought you wanted to go on to Danvers in the morning. This could be good. All right, we've made five scores here already. No fixing with the sheriff. I figure it's time to move on. I think we ought to be able to pull off one more without any trouble. Depends if it's worth it. How much money this chump's got? Charlie? The story is he made it pretty good in a gold field. You the double-jointed fellow they call Loose Charlie? That's me. He falls in front of carriages, throws himself out of joint, and yells and carries on. What do you pick up for a thing like that? Fifteen, twenty bucks? Yeah, generally. His idea of a big score in ours might be something different. Charlie put me on to something good a couple of years ago. This could run maybe three, four thousand dollars. Oh, more like five times that. Second thought, maybe we better take a look at this chum. Indeed. That's the mark. Looks like a real cinch. There's a couple problems. I see how quick I can pick them up. Buy him a few drinks. Oh, he doesn't drink. All right, buy him coffee. Stay with him. We'll get him in a game tonight. He doesn't gamble. We'll teach him. He knows. He's against all forms of wagering. That knocks out poker. And the race wire. We'll let the alderman try the stock market swindle. Uh-uh. Why not? He's a country boy. You say stock, and he thinks you mean cows. Charlie, is there anything else you haven't told us about this Yahoo? Well, he tips his hat to ladies. And he's honest. How honest? All the way, straight as air. His name is Christian Keller. But is he ripe for picking? I mean... Don't count on it. Charlie, thanks for nothing. He deposited $67,000. Are you sure? Positive. Well, it may be a little time-consuming, but I guess we're going to have to sell him something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, what kind of company was that again? A Patent Reaper Company. Patent Reaper Company. Well, that is a rich, full sound. And how did they pick you up? I was sitting there having a cup of coffee. And this fellow comes up to me, Walt, his name is, mm -hmm. and he says, did I drop my wallet? And sure enough, underneath my chair, there's this wallet. So you looked into it, and you found out who owned it. Hmm? That's right, Mr. Hobie Miles. And the wallet was stuffed with money. Was it? So, of course, you took the wallet right back to Mr. Hobie Miles at the hotel. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Miles just happened to own a patent reaper company. That's right. Hmm. You know, I was finding wallets all the time up north. Well, they sure didn't waste any time, did they? No, but they didn't try and sell me anything. They just kept talking about how much money the stockholders in this company are going to make. But they, uh, they did say I could see the plans. Did they? And when do you see these people again? In the morning. And I asked them if I could bring a friend along. And they, uh, they said he'd be welcomed. Very good. I look forward to seeing a patent reaper. There you are, gentlemen. This little beauty will revolutionize harvesting. We already have orders from all these machines that we can possibly manufacture in a year. You know, I think that could be a very big success. It already is. Well, uh, when I was here before, uh, you said something about stock. Walt said that... Uh, Walt? What did Walt say? He said maybe we could buy some stock. He did, did he? What'd you say that for? You know every share of stock was spoken four months ago. I thought, Mr. Mike... That's the problem. You didn't think. Now, gentlemen, I thought you came up here to see these drawings. I never dreamed Mr. King would give you the idea you could buy stock. I've, uh, I've refused uh, old friends, even members of my own family. Oh, well, I'm uh, very sorry. I... I'm sorry we've troubled you. No, no, wait now. 
Mr. Miles, Mr. Kelly, he is a friend of yours. He returned your wallet with more than a thousand dollars in it. Uh, he's an honest man, a, a deserving man. I admit that. And but... Mr. Kelly's friend, Mr. Cartwright, why, he owns one of the largest ranches hereabouts. He could be of great help in getting the reaper sale started in this area. Think about it, Mr. Miles. You be helping a man who helped you and also helping your reaper company. Well, now, there was a block of stock I was saving for a man who was supposed to be here two days ago. He hasn't shown up yet. So under the circumstances, I suppose I can let you have that. Thank you, Mr. Miles. It'd be expensive. Cost you $71,000. Well, I haven't got that much. <clears throat> well, uh, Chris, I, uh, I just might be able to come up with the difference. Cash or certified check, no later than tomorrow morning. Yeah, well, uh, we could, uh, we could get, get over to the bank and get things started. Well, thank you very much. It's I, all right. It's uh, awfully nice of you to allow us to participate in this. It's all right. A reasonable profit on an investment is always welcome, but this also offers us a chance to help every rancher in Nevada. All right, gentlemen. We'll see you shortly. Hey, homie, you're Jim Dandy. Well, I was in top form, if I do say so myself. <laughs> and so was Ben Cartwright. <laughs> oh, Cartwright and that Chris are coming up with the money. Mm-hmm. In marked bills with the sheriff in the next room. Huh? Don't you know a smart man when you see one? A man like Ben Cartwright isn't going to make a heavy investment after one meeting in a hotel room. So pack your things, both of you. You're leaving town right now. I guess we better. And this teaches me the virtues of humility. And what about you? Mr. Blackwell? Hmm? Obi wants to know what uh, you're going to do. You never give up. Not you. A wise man knows when it's time to quit. What happened, Ben? I'll tell you what happened, Clem. Mr. Miles and company have disappeared. Vamos, checked out. I'll be. I had the room next door, right? I was going to wait till you handed the money and then nail them. Sure. Now, what could have spooked them? Maybe we were too willing to buy. Well, we chased them out of town anyway. I mean, that's not as good as putting them in jail, but it's something. Oh, it is. Eh? Well, it's a job for me, is what it is. I've got to try and pick up the trail now. Yes, you do, Clem. Good luck. Well, thanks a lot, Ben. Well, let's get back to work. I'm fine. I've been dragged across what oh. must have been half of Nevada by a runaway horse that was guaranteed gentle and trustworthy. I've been battered and bruised. Yes, I'm just fine. Yeah, I guess you are. What do you mean? I'm just fine. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to make a speech like that if you weren't. You sure of that? Pretty sure. Well, he's, uh, he's settled down now. What scared him? Why'd you run away? He saw a snake in the road. Oh. 
See there? That's why he took off. Here you go. Let me help you down. All right. Oh! Whoa. Oh! Whoa. Oh! I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. I should be getting used to it. Look, I'll just hold him in a... You get on down. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I was beginning to think you didn't know much about horses. Yeah, it could be, but I, uh, I know more about horses than I do about ladies. Oh? Well, I think it's a mistake to ask this, but I'm going to anyway. Just what do you mean by that? Nothing, except I thought you might get mad at me again for the horse getting scared. Oh, no. Anything but. I certainly haven't been very polite, have I? You saved my life, and I've scolded you as if the whole thing were your fault. I was thinking it was. I'm sorry. I can't even thank you properly. I don't know your name. Chris, ma'am. Chris Keller. Charity McGill. And I do thank you. You're welcome. Look, Miss McGill, why don't you get up here in the buggy? It's all right. Come on. And I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go to the Ponderosa. I work there. Not too far from here. Both you and your horse can get rested up. You ever heard of the Ponderosa? No. Biggest ranch in these parts. Mr. Cartwright owns it. Well, you know more about ladies than you think you do. Let's go. Well, I think I've got that horse all settled down now. Well, I guess I'm all settled down, too. Well, I better get started. Well, Miss McGill, it's a long ride to Virginia City. Wouldn't be any trouble if you'd like to stay over or if you want one of us to drive you back. Oh, you've done quite enough already, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. Well, goodbye, and thank you all. Nice meeting you. I'll goodbye. walk you to the buggy. I'm afraid I'll never be able to repay you, Mr. Keller. Well, don't think anything about it. Strikes gold and rescues a pretty girl. Come, fellas, have all the luck. Yeah, well, it's kind of cute. It seems very nice. Mr. Cartwright? Hmm? If I get all those uh, strays in this afternoon, uh, can I have tomorrow off? Uh, <clears throat> yes, I, I suppose so. Uh, any particular reason you'd like to have the day off? Uh, I just thought I'd ride into Virginia City. Yeah, well, he's got money in the bank. He probably wants to win and watch it grow. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Keller. Morning. Uh, hey, can I give you a hand? Well, I would appreciate that. Just up to the hotel? Uh-huh. How have you been? Fine. Uh, lemon drops. Try and chew them up quick so I can talk. <laughs> Do you have any peppermint? What was salt? Mm, thank you. I have an awful sweet tooth. So do I. I go around like this half the time. Say, did you get back to town all right the other day? No, I was captured by Indians, fought by a band of wandering gypsies, and finally rescued by the cavalry. That sounds terrible. Was. I nearly missed dinner. <laughs> ah, fish hooks. I know. They're too big. No, they're about right. They're too big. I don't like to dispute a lady. Well, don't then. Have you done any fishing? Certainly. What kind? Chub, dace, catfish. Well, there you are. And trout and salmon. These things must be for sharks. You like to fish? Oh, yes. So do I. Miss McGill, I, uh... Yes? Nothing. Forget it. Well, it was awfully nice seeing you again, Mr. Keller. And thank you very much. My pleasure. <laughs> well, goodbye. Bye.
Miss McGill. I, uh, I don't suppose you'd... Yes, I would. I'll be ready first thing in the morning. Oh, and those fish hooks are too big. Superstition fish can't hear. What you have to watch out for is letting your shadow fall on the water. Oh, your shadow's not going to fall in the water this time of day. Look at there. Mm. Uh huh? Here. Worms. Oh, no. Set deep, I suppose. Of course. Mm. Grasshoppers, on the surface. Charity, your ignorance is pitiful. I'm going to go downstream and work that for a while. Hey, it's a pure waste of time. We'll see. Can I borrow one of your grasshoppers? <laughs> I've had a wonderful time, Chris. So have I. May I have my key, please? Maybe tomorrow I can, uh, I can get off early and come into town and I'll, I'll take you to supper. Is there anything wrong? I don't think so. Are you sure? No, it's just some business. You go along, Chris. I'll talk to you later. You say so. Charity? It's all right, Chris. Everything all right? Sure, a couple more hours and we'll have her finished. Good. See you later. Mr. Cartwright. Yeah? Uh, can I speak to you for a few minutes? Sure, Chris. I was over uh, taking a look at Ed Newhall's place the other day. And he's thinking of selling. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I was just wondering what you thought about it. Well, Ed Newhall's place is uh, a good land there. Nice little, uh, nice little house. Good outbuildings, too. My impression, too. Mm -hmm. Just needs a little work. Are you interested? Yeah. Well, since those, uh, the swindlers took off, I thought I'd put the money to good use. Find a ranch, huh? Yeah, I know it's reaching kind of high, but, uh, well, Charity McGill's the finest girl I ever met. Well, now, you're thinking of getting married, too. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I haven't asked her yet. I haven't got up the nerve. I don't know what she'll do when I, when I do ask her. <laughs> you mean you, you don't know her well enough to know what she's liable to say? Well, sure I do. I know that uh, her father died recently and that she lives in Sacramento and she's here on business. And there's this fellow that's given her some kind of a problem. But I expect everything's going to work out all right. I sure hope so. Yeah, yeah, so do I, Chris. Sure do. Meanwhile, getting to know her better is all to be good. Now, marriage is for a long, long time. Oh. 
over on the Russian River, I tied into a big old steelhead. Boy, did he give me a fight. We're not doing very well today, are we? No. What time is it? Oh, one, one thirty in there. Why? Well, I have to be back to see the lawyer this afternoon. But there's still time. Honey, if there's anything I can do to help. No, no, it's just some affairs of my father's. Go on with the story. Oh, well, I... I wrestled with him for 20 minutes to a half hour easy. He was a real old sock to locker. That big. That's the gospel. How big? More like that. I thought so. What'd I do? I've got a bite! <laughs> So I guess I'll go on home. How soon? Day after tomorrow. That's kind of sudden. Yes, I suppose. When will you be coming back? I don't believe I will. I mean, there's no real reason to. Guess not. You can come visit me. No, I don't think I want to. I'll write to you. Will you miss me? Oh. Charity, you're not going anywhere, because I love you, and we're going to get married. that and dreading it at the same time. What for? I can't, Chris. Why not? Well, you can't ask a man to take on a lot of unwanted problems. Well, not if you really and truly love him. <laughs> well, when my daddy died, about the only thing he left was the lead better number six. Well, that's a gold mine just below here. Yes, I know. Well, about two weeks ago, I got a letter from this man, Arthur Blackwell, saying that he had mortgages and liens against the mine, and if I didn't pay them, he was going to take the mine. I don't understand your problem, Miss Miguel. Let him take it. That mine was worked out years ago. No, Daddy said he found a new vein, but that's not the point. Mr. Blackwell's been saying that my father salted the mine and falsified the assay to swindle him. Well, I'm not going to let this man blacken my father's memory. I see. I told Charity I had some money. And the easiest thing in the world was for me to get her out of debt. Well, I don't think you should do that. Well, Chris, you realize what you're saying. You're, I mean, when you strip it all away, what you'd be doing is uh, buying a gold mine. As long as it'll help Charity. Well, it'd have to be a loan, Chris, with a new assay and the proper papers drawn up and everything. What is the amount of the debt? $65,000. Hmm. Well, well, well. If you like, we'll, uh, we'll help you uh, take the assay. I mean, getting ore samples out of an old mine shaft is no work for a young lady. Well, that's very nice of you. I'd appreciate that. Of course. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll write a note uh, for you to sign, giving us permission to be in your property. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Not at all. Get over to that mine right away tonight. Don't let anybody near it. Why, what do you think? It's a rather unusual story we just heard. Our oh, horse is down with the South Herd. Drop by there and tell them to meet us at the mine. I'll join you there in the morning. We just may be able to settle a couple of things. Ah, this hot coffee tastes good. Boy, it got cold last night. Oh, you're not kidding. Uh, 
Have any visitors? Nope, nope, no one. Not at all? Yeah, from the looks of this place, nobody's been here in a year. Yeah. I'm gonna get the equipment here. I'm gonna get some samples all along the shaft. Maybe five feet or so. All right. I uh, want to get some core samples, too. About uh, six feet into the face. Well, might as well get started, huh? <sighs> Figure these. Samples are worthless. I don't see how there could be anything of any value in that mine. At least Charity's been honest about it. She's the one that wanted the assay report. I'm still troubled by the fact that the amount of money that she owes happens to be almost exactly the amount of money that Chris has in the bank. Isn't that strange? Well, I think it's just a coincidence. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. Well, I hope so. Meanwhile, let's, uh, let's stick to the plan. If anybody tries to solve those samples, we'll let them look the other way. All right. I'll wait here for Hoss. Straight there. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, all right. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, we can leave it out of here and watch from the inside. Well, that'll give them the chance they want. And we can have a beer. Not a bad idea. Two hours and not even a nip. Two free beers and a free lunch? It wasn't all wasted. Yeah, I suppose you're right. You bring Rock to maybe so office? Maybe so office? Maybe so you get rich. Maybe so you don't. Maybe so. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> ah, young men in search of a fortune bringing in a wagon load of high-grade ore for the ASA office. Solid gold rocks. I can tell by the feel of them. That's really our day for dingbats, isn't it? <laughs> Let's get this stuff inside. <laughs> well, Mr. Gill, sit down. Thank you. The, uh, this ASA report was uh, brought back about an hour ago by Joan Candy. Now, uh, most of the samples were proved worthless. That's to be expected. But according to this report, apparently there's a vein of ore in that mine which assays out at an average of $2,500 a ton. Hey, that's great. Oh, I never doubted it. And that's almost exactly the same figure Daddy had. Now is all we have to do is get the money to Mr. Blackwell and we'll have everything nailed down for you. For us. There's one other thing. Um, this report is based on one set of samples. Uh, we took two sets, as identical as we could possibly make them. My son, Hoss, is having the second set assayed in Carson City right now. Well, isn't that unusual? Just an added precaution. It's more than that. Well, let Mr. Cartwright tell me. Well, if the, uh, the two reports agree, then everything's all right. There's no problem. 
They don't? He's saying there's something funny going on. Like what? Something. That's why he's getting two assays. Well, I think it's a good idea. I don't. Oh, Chris, stop fussing, and it's time we were leaving. Well, please let me know as soon as you get the report. Of course. Thank you. You got the second report, huh? Well, the samples were the same as the others. Not quite. The best of these samples showed a value of a dollar six. That man's been manned up. The samples are just like the other ones. We got them at the same time from the same places. Sorry, Chris. She was trying to swindle me all the time. That's what she's trying to do. She wouldn't accept any help after I told her you were waiting for a second report. I had to beg her to take the money. But you did take it. Sure she did. Now, I'm not sure if I can get it back, but I'm going to try. I'd appreciate it if you ride along with me. Sure. Ah, my darling niece. Where are you going? Well, I was going to leave Virginia City, but I wanted to see you first. Commander Boom. Since you have the money that we all jointly earned from that young man, we do have to split it up. Well, I've been thinking about that. Uncle Arthur, I've made a decision about of this whole thing. Of course you have, my dear. All beginners come to that same decision the first time out. It's just buck fever. Come on. We'll have that little talk. Hmm? A great day, gentlemen. Truly a great day. Well, that's right, Art. I mean, Mr. Blackwell. <laughs> there. Bleed, you rascal. <laughs> ah, greatest little invention since the wheel. Saw anything and everything. Uh, with the liquid essence of gold. <laughs> you are a good man. So are you, Charlie. From now on, you stick with us. <laughs> Much obliged. And now let us drink to that little lady without whose feminine charms and quick wit, none of this would have been possible. Here, here. To you, my dear niece, our heartfelt thanks. You did well on your first venture into the confidence world. Extremely well. Pity you had an attack of conscience. My dear, you must learn. Never give a sucker his money back. The real pity is you could have been one of the great ones. So, hail, farewell. <laughs> talking any time. I'm sorry, Chris. Sure you are. They got you tied up here like a Christmas turkey. No wonder you're sorry. All right. Oh. Who tied you up, Miss McGill? My uncle and his bunch. They're on their way to Carson City. They said they were going to Denver, but I know they're going to Carson. When did they leave? Oh, 30, 40 minutes ago in a buggy. Oh, Chris, I know you're not going to believe this, but I was trying to bring the money back. All of it when Uncle Arthur caught me. You're right. I don't believe it. Come on, let's go find him. Look at this. 
Oh, yeah. Hey, wait, I'm going with you. If we gave all the money back, we'd only get about nine or ten years. Don't be a fool. All right. You let us go. We'll leave the money behind. Otherwise, I'll burn it up. Every dollar. Money's here and a lot more. They must have got it from them other fellas. Six weeks. Hard work. We let a chump like you take it away from us. There's no justice in the world. Your fault. My kin, but you don't take after my side of the family. Well, I'm sure my fiance won't mind. Your who? My fiance. Fella named Chris Keller. We're going to be married. We're going to be what? I know you won't believe this now, but it's true. I found out I couldn't steal, not even once. Because I love you, you big loot. And I'll convince you if it takes the rest of my life. Well, it won't take that long. I love you, Chris, honest. Those are the prettiest words I ever heard. I'll make him a good wife, really. You know something, Chris? I believe she will. <laughs> <laughs> 